Did you ever wonder why batteries are called AA, AAA, or C? It sounds simple, but the story hides a century of trial and error. From vanished sizes like A and B to the kings that survived, each letter marks a turning point. If you have ever opened a remote and slid in those tiny cells, you're part of this history. Today, we uncover how chaos turned into order, why some batteries ruled while others disappeared. The World Before Standards In the early years of portable power, there was no shared system at all. Every company produced batteries in its own shapes and sizes, leaving buyers confused and frustrated. Imagine buying a new flashlight, only to discover no shop carried the strange cell it required. That was a common problem before rules were agreed upon. Some firms used letters, some used numbers, and some used nothing at all. Without clear names, the same device could claim a battery no one else has made. People carried flashlights, radios, or toys that often became useless once their first set of cells ran dry. It was not that batteries did not exist, but finding the exact type could be a challenge. The situation made consumers lose trust in certain gadgets because the power source felt unreliable. A child might wait weeks for a replacement cell that never arrived. As electricity spread into homes, the demand for consistency became stronger. By the 1930s and 1940s, pressure was building for order in a marketplace that looked like chaos. The birth of the alphabet system. By the 1940s, the need for order could no longer be ignored. Organizations stepped forward to build rules that every battery maker had to follow. In the United States, the American National Standards Institute created a size and shape system. Worldwide, the International Electrotechnical Commission worked on similar guidelines. Together, they set up a simple idea. Each letter in the alphabet represents a physical size, not the amount of stored power. The letter A became the starting point for this new line of cylindrical batteries. From there, smaller versions were marked AA and then AAA. This pattern made it easy to understand at a glance. Just like shoe sizes, the shape stayed the same, but the scale changed with each step. Manufacturers quickly saw the value in using one code. It meant any consumer could walk into a store and find the right cell without confusion. What began as a technical rule soon shaped daily life. Millions of devices were built with these letters in mind, locking the alphabet system into history. What happened to the A battery? The plain A battery was real, and it still exists today. It is simply not something you are likely to find in a supermarket aisle. This size first appeared in the early 1900s when companies searched for a standard shape. It sat neatly between the smaller AA and the larger C cell. In design, it looked like a typical cylinder, but carried more power than an AA. For some devices, that balance of size and power worked well. Over time, however, most household gadgets moved toward AA and AAA. They were easier to fit into toys, radios, and remotes that people use daily. The A cell slipped into a quieter role instead of disappearing fully. Special machines, military tools, and scientific instruments continued to use it. Today, it remains part of the catalog for companies serving niche markets. Its absence from store shelves shows how popularity, not invention, decides which sizes survive. The Forgotten B Battery the B battery once had an important job in homes across the world. It was the power source for vacuum tube radios that filled living rooms with sound. Unlike A or AA cells, the B battery was not used for simple flashlights. Its main role was to deliver high voltage that radio tubes needed to operate. Families would buy large packs to keep their radios alive for news and music. For a time, 
this battery felt as vital as the device itself. But technology kept moving forward, and the transistor arrived. Transistors could operate at much lower voltages, making the bulky B cell unnecessary. As new radios spread, the demand for B batteries collapsed almost overnight. Stores stopped stocking them because no one needed them anymore. Today, they survive only in history books and old collections. Their story shows how quickly one standard can vanish when a new idea takes hold. Why AA became king. The AA battery became the clear winner in the world of everyday devices. Its size struck the right balance between being compact and storing enough energy. Early flashlights were built around it because it was reliable and easy to replace. Portable radios soon followed, giving people music and news on the move. When toys became more electronic, AA batteries fit perfectly inside their small frames. They powered cars, dolls, and games without making the toys too heavy. Later, television remotes appeared in homes, and once again, AA was chosen. It was strong enough to last, but not too large for a slim controller. This constant presence built a cycle of trust between consumers and AA cells. People expected them to work everywhere, and manufacturers designed more products around them. Soon, stores were filled with packs of AA batteries on every corner. Their mix of convenience, power, and wide use cemented them as the standard. Even as technology evolved, AA never lost its place on the shelf. It became the symbol of a battery that simply worked for almost anything. The rise of AAA7. As electronics became smaller, the demand for a slimmer power source grew. This change set the stage for the rise of AAA batteries. Introduced in the 1950s, it quickly found its place in compact gadgets. Slim flashlights, portable tape recorders, and pocket radios all relied on it. The design was lighter, making it easier to carry devices anywhere. It offered less power than AA, but enough for low-drain machines. Remote controls became one of their most common uses in homes. Their thin shape made AAA the perfect fit for the casing. Manufacturers loved the flexibility it provided for smaller designs. It allowed them to shrink products without losing practical battery power. By the late 20th century, AAA had become as familiar as AA. Together, they powered most gadgets found in everyday life. The AAA battery proved that shrinking technology needed shrinking power sources. It showed how size could matter as much as strength in design. The big cylinders, C and D. Not all devices could survive on small batteries alone. Some machines needed larger cells built for heavy use. That is where C and D batteries entered the picture. These cylinders were wider, heavier, and carried much more energy. C batteries often powered portable radios that families carried outdoors. They also worked well for toys that demanded stronger bursts of power. D batteries were even larger, made for high drain equipment. Big flashlights, lanterns, and boom boxes depended on their strength. The size may have been bulky, but it gave longer running times. People trusted them for camping trips and emergencies when light was vital. As gadgets became smaller, C and D's role slowly faded. They were no longer needed for most household electronics, yet they never vanished completely from the market. Their staying power shows that larger still has a place when durability matters most. Oddballs, variants, and button cells. Beyond the common alphabet, other shapes quietly filled special roles. The AAAA battery, slimmer than AAA, powered laser pointers and stylus pens. It was not a household name, but it solved problems in tiny devices. Its thin form made it perfect, where even AAA was too large. 
Then came the world of button cells, shaped like small coins. These were used in watches, calculators, and hearing aids for decades. They did not follow the alphabet rule at all. Instead, they carried numbers and letters linked to voltage and size. Many gadgets today still depend on these miniature power sources. Their design proves that not all batteries have to fit one pattern. The mix of cylinders, slim sticks, and flat coins created variety. It showed that different tools demanded different answers in portable energy. Why only AA and AAA survived? In the end, two sizes rose above the rest. AA and ATSA-A1 because they offered the perfect mix of size and strength. Makers of gadgets noticed how easily people found them in stores, so they kept designing more products around these two shapes. This constant loop of supply and demand grew stronger every year. More devices used them, more shops stocked them, and trust only deepened. Other letters slowly slipped away as buyers no longer searched for them. C and D stayed alive, but only in bulkier tools that needed extra power. Standardization sealed the fate of AA and AAA as the global default. Familiarity kept them alive, showing that survival can depend more on habit than invention. The Modern Battery World Today, the battery landscape looks very different from the past. Phones, laptops, and cameras now rely on built-in lithium packs. These custom cells do not follow the old alphabet code. They are shaped to match each device's design. Rechargeable AA and AAA cells also changed how people buy power. Nickel metal hydride and lithium versions can be charged hundreds of times. This reduced waste while keeping the same familiar sizes in use. Consumers did not need to learn a new system to upgrade. Still, shelves in every supermarket continue to carry AA and AAA. Their low cost and wide fit keep them relevant even today. The mix of old and new shows how both worlds coexist. Standard cylinders remain beside modern sealed packs each serving its own role. Next time you slide open the back of a remote, pause for a moment. Those two small cylinders carry more history than most people ever imagine. Each AA or AAA cell is a reminder of early struggles for order. It shows how simple rules shaped the way entire industries grew. The missing A and B tell their own quieter story of change. Not every idea lasts, but each leaves a trace in the timeline of power. From chaos to standards, batteries reveal how design and demand choose winners. Even the smallest objects can hold the biggest lessons.